Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 25 Then answered Bildad the Shuhite and said, Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies? And upon whom doth not his light arise? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Behold, even to the moon, and it shineth not. Yea, the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man that is a worm, and the son of man which is a worm. The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Read by Alexander Scorby. The Book of the Prophet Jeremiah, Chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, and worshipped the works of their own hands. Thou therefore gird up thy loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defensive city, and an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. The hymn writer declares, Safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. O oh, friend of mine, it is wonderful to know that by the grace of God, we have made it through another week. A happy day and a restful night to you, wherever you are. We trust that you are ready for the Sabbath day, or if the sun has not set where you are, you are preparing to welcome the Sabbath and to prepare to have meaningful fellowship with Jesus and with your sons and daughters and brothers and sisters in Christ on the Sabbath day. Today we are beginning a new book, the book of Jeremiah, and so we are focusing on Jeremiah 
chapter 1 and Job, Job chapter 25. I'm reading now Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to verse 6. The word of God declares, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah speaking, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Verse 6, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to verse 6. Today's message is entitled, To Each His Own. To Each His Own. Let us pray, dear God. We thank you that you are as close as the mention of your name. And we ask only now that you will speak with us. Bless that boy, that girl, that man, that woman who is listening right now. May they hear your voice through your word and feel your touch of love and power. For Christ's sake, amen. One Wakefield tells the story of the famous inventor Samuel Morse, who was once asked if he ever encountered situations where he didn't know what to do. Samuel Morse responded, More than once, and whenever I could not see my way clearly, I knelt down and prayed to God for light and understanding. Morse received many honors for his invention of the telegraph, but felt undeserving. I have made a valuable application of electricity, not because I was superior to other men, but solely because God, who meant it for mankind, must reveal it to someone, and he was pleased to reveal it to me. End of quote. God works with the humble and the teachable human being. God works with the humble and the teachable human being. The first point we can glean from Jeremiah chapter 1 is that God can work with the humble. God can work with the humble. First Peter chapter 5 verse 5 declares, For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. It appears, it appears, that all those whom God used mightily, were distrustful of self and their ability to fulfill the task when God called them. We say that again. It appears that all those whom God used mightily were distrustful of self and their ability to fulfill the task when God called them. Three examples come to mind. The first is Solomon. Solomon. When Solomon was called to the throne, he said in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5, 6, and 7, the Bible declares, In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. Solomon, Ascending the throne, said, Lord, I, I feel like I'm, I'm like a little child. I don't know what to do. And he asked God for wisdom. We know the account. God responded to Solomon's humble attitude and prayer and made him the wisest and greatest king on earth. Moses is another example. When God called Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, Moses declared in Exodus chapter 3 verse 11, he said to God, he said, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Exodus chapter 4 
and verse 10 declares, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the third example is Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the main character in the book of Jeremiah, manifested the same attitude like that of Solomon and Moses when God called him. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to verse 6, the Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. We say again that it appears that all those whom God used mightily were distrustful of self and their ability to fulfill the task when God called them. When God called Jeremiah, Jeremiah declared, Alas, Lord Yahweh, I am but a child. Judging by the length of his ministry, Jeremiah was probably under 25, perhaps only 18 or 20 years old when God called him. The young Jeremiah shrank back in terror from the thought of being a prophet. A sense of unworthiness overwhelmed him, and his nature recoiled from a task in which he would be out of step with the men of his generation. As indicated also by his bitter complaint later in his ministry, in chapter 15 verse 10, Jeremiah dreaded the enmity of men. Jeremiah objected that he lacked the eloquence necessary to qualify him for the prophetic office. A prophet must speak to great men and the multitudes. How could he, without the powers of oratory, win the attention of the people or influence them for God? He almost said the same thing that Moses mentioned in Exodus chapter 3 verse 11 and Exodus 4.10. Jeremiah felt that he could not frame his messages in suitable language. It appears that all those whom God used mightily were distrustful of self and their ability to fulfill the task which God called them to perform. Secondly, even before Jeremiah was born, it had been God's plan for his life that he should fill the prophetic office. We say that again, even before Jeremiah was born, it had been God's plan for his life that he should fulfill the prophetic office. You see, friend of mine, to every individual, God has assigned a place of duty and responsibility in his great plan of redemption. We say that again. To every individual, God has assigned a place of duty and responsibility in his great plan. Prophets and Kings, page 536. Christ Object Lessons, page 326. Christ Object Lessons, page 327. And the Bible mentions in 1 Corinthians 12 that the Holy Spirit gives every man talents and abilities. God has given each of us at least one talent or ability to be used specifically by us for his purpose and for our happiness and development. We say that again. God has given each of us at least one talent or ability to be used specifically by us for his purpose and for our happiness and development. And to deviate from God's plan for our lives may make us rich, but it would not give us peace of mind. And so the chorus of the gospel hymn says, There's a place, oh may I find it, where my mission I can fill. Be it humble or exalted, may I hold it with a will. Help to serve my generation with a heart of love and grace. Help me, Lord. From this time forward, find and occupy my place. Even before he was born, God sanctified or set Jeremiah apart for special use. He separated him for his peculiar 
work as a prophet. God not only set him apart, God ordained or appointed him to the prophetic office. His was a similar prenatal choice like that of John the Baptist in Luke chapter 1 verse 15. Now, 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 Jeremiah might have refused to comply with the divine call. He still had the power of choice. All men and women are endowed at birth with certain possibilities, but it is their responsibility to develop those possibilities to the full. Likewise, God has a plan for every life today. Education page 267 says, The specific place appointed us in life is determined by our capabilities. The specific place appointed us in life is determined by our capabilities. And so we should discover what this place is and seek to carry out God's purpose and plan for us. You see, friend of mine, a man or woman, man generic, a man will gain power and efficiency as he accepts the responsibilities that God places upon him and with his whole heart seeks to qualify himself to bear them aright. However humble his position or limited his ability, that man will attain true greatness who, trusting to divine strength, seeks to perform his work with faithfulness. Had Moses and Solomon and Jeremiah relied upon their own strength and education and wisdom and eagerly accepted the great charge, they would have evinced their entire unfitness for their work because they would have been depending on their own little knowledge and strength and education. But you see, friend of mine, the fact that a man feels his weakness is at least some evidence that he realizes the magnitude of the work appointed him and that he will make God his counselor and his strength. We say that again, using another gender, the fact that a woman feels her weakness is at least some evidence that she realizes the magnitude of the work appointed her and that she will make God her counselor and her strength. Oh, friend of mine, what is God asking you to do for him? What is God asking you to do for him with the talents that he has given you and the abilities he has given you? Why not accept God's gracious call on your life today and trust him to make you successful, fulfilled, and happy in doing his will? Oh, friend of mine, what is God asking you to do for him what has he been asking you to do for him, perhaps, and you've been running from him? What is God asking you to do for him? Why not accept his gracious call on your life and trust him to make you successful and fulfilled? Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the example of Solomon and Moses and Jeremiah, who even though they were distrustful of self and scared some of them and fearful with your promise to be with them, they accepted what you asked them to do. And they did it excellently. Because it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. As they depended on you, you used them mightily. Father, may our ears be tuned to hear what you're asking us to do. And may we, though we may feel scared and unqualified, may we trust you to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves and to make us children of God. Be with those who've made prayer requests, dear Lord. We pray that you'll be with the silly family. Be with silly or the silly and his family. Watch over them. Provide for their needs. If there are any challenges, we bring them before you, knowing that earth hath no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Provide for the needs each day. May they always have enough and to spare. And Father, may they continue loving you and serving you until we see you face to face. Grant us, dear God, a wonderful day and a restful night as we, as we place again our prayer requests in your hand. We anticipate your answers and your rich blessings and a wonderful Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.